Hello the people, I am M. Page. Sorry for the lack of on-screen avatar, but I figured since I'm talking about something gaming related, it would only be appropriate to just have gameplay footage on the screen instead. And if you don't like that, then put your money where your mouth is and do the visuals yourself. My video is even set to the attribution license, so don't worry about legal stuff with my video as long as my name is on it somewhere. As for the gameplay you're seeing right now, it's actually footage of Crash Bash that I recorded about two months ago. For those who don't follow me on Twitter or just want more details, here's the thing. Speedrunning, the art of taking a video game and playing it really fast for audience amusement. Now obviously there's more nuance to it than that. People always trying to outdo one another when it comes to finding tricks, exploits, shortcuts, anything to break the game in such a way that shaves time off the final count from a few minutes down to a couple milliseconds. If this explanation sounds familiar, you've probably heard it before from the likes of Jane Animations, the first speedrunner to submit an all gold percent world record for Cookie Mama 2 Dinner with Friends. And also Burnt Apple Pie percent. I've watched videos about speedrunning before, but hers was just the inspiration I needed to give it a try myself. But what game would it be? At first I was thinking Guitar Hero because I'm really great at it, but then I remembered watching Apollo Legends video on terrible speedruns. He basically said that there's no point in speedrunning Guitar Hero given that every song in the game is a fixed length and the only time saves would be in the menu. Even if I were to start my own category that uses speed mods, it would be less an exhibition of knowledge and skill and more of deciding which notes were and weren't worth hitting to cheese the run. I also consider Wheel of Fortune for the same reasons, but then rejected it after seeing it in the same video. I also consider Crash Bandicoot, seeing as it's one of my favorite franchises of all time, but it's tricky enough to get platinum relics in each level individually, let alone speedrunning the whole game. So just for fun, I also browsed the Crash Bash leaderboards because I loved this game as a kid and still kinda do. And I was pretty curious what the times looked like on the leaderboard. I saw records for one player adventure and two player adventure and the like, all of them out of my league of course. But then I saw something wonderful. Level leaderboards. Basically for people that can't do the full game or don't have time to do the full game, you can just attempt a single level over and over again until you get that run optimized and submit your time to the levels board. And it would seem that Crash Bash has some for the commonly overlooked tournament mode. If you're not familiar with tournament mode, basically you play all the levels tied to a particular theme and you win if you have the most cups in the end. And the world record run for my favorite tournament, Crate Crush, with no memory manipulation, is a 440 submitted by Buggle from Italy. I picked up a bit from the guy's video, and there were two bits of common strategy that I picked up from him that seemed to apply to a lot of runners here. 1. Play as Cortex. He has the fastest box throwing animation, and those time saves pile up fast. 2. Plan to lose two of the four levels as fast as possible, so that minutes can be shaved off my final time while guaranteeing the win. Because the run doesn't count unless you win the tournament at the end, you see. That's how it works. Also, two cups advances the round and the AI is on easy for obvious reasons. Before I started recording, I figured I might as well get some practice runs done to adjust myself to the strategy. My initial plan was to win the first and fourth levels of the tournament and die as fast as possible in between. I thought this would be the best way to go about getting on the board because that's what Buggle did in his run. But even accounting for all the common tricks and fastest ways to die, I still failed the run. Either because I couldn't win the first level fast enough, or because I couldn't win the fourth level at all. And before anyone asks, no, it was not my gold be number one. The time I was after was the 758 by AQL Gamers, also from Italy. Now you're probably thinking, Ian Page, if you just wanted to get on the board, why not target the 1011 run from Slory in the USA? My reasoning was that their run was so far off from the run above it, that trying to target it wouldn't showcase real skill, it would just showcase how desperate I am to put my name on the board that I would kick an innocent runner while they were down. So I didn't want to go down like that. Anyway, some more practicing later and I found the real secret to optimizing the run. Basically, I didn't have to force myself to win the first and fourth levels. Instead, I could just do my best at my two favorite levels and not sweat the rest. So changing my strategy from blow the middle two levels to win the first two levels helped me out immensely. It meant that once I got my four cups, all I had to do was blow the latter two levels while making sure that the player who was favored to win that round wasn't someone that would drag the game out or end the tournament in a draw. 
All that was easier said than done, however, and the recording situation wasn't exactly helpful. I actually had two board-worthy runs, a 655 and a 746. I only submitted the 746 run though, and I'm going to show you some bits from the other run to explain why. Basically, there were two major flaws with this run. Number one should be obvious to anyone with eyeballs, and that would be the frame rate. It chugs more than Barney Gumble at happy hour. Basically, this is what happens when my gaming laptop tries to record a 720p capture source in 1080p. So here's a capture tip. Make sure the capture device resolution and the encoder resolution are the same so that there's no unnecessary upscaling hogging the computer resources. But even if speedrun.com would accept this abysmal frame rate for their leaderboard, there's another flaw in this footage that pretty much reeks of disqualification. Having trouble finding it? Well, in case you can't hear anything, let me spell it out for you. You can't hear anything! In most speedrunning communities, it is considered a cardinal sin to submit a run that has no sound in it. The reasoning for this decision makes sense. It helps the analyst figure out if you cheated a run or not. I've seen examples of cheating in speedruns where you can figure out if a run is fake by listening for an audio splice. No sound, no proof. So basically, I restarted the next day with my settings configured properly. It took a few attempts, but then everything just lined up. You are now seeing the actual run I submitted to speedrun.com. If you want to see this run without my commentary, you can click on the link in the description to see my run on their website. That being said, let's start this thing. Um, the first level is Jungle Bash. Jungle Bash is pretty much as basic as basic can get when it comes to crate throwing. Uh, my plan here was to try and win as fast as possible in whatever way I could. Like, grab a box, throw it at the nearest person, and if a person gets near me, hit the square button. Um, the reason I wanted to get this done fast is because this was my biggest time sink, this particular level. Like, yes, it is one of my top two levels in the game when it comes to speedrunning, but it, that doesn't make it any less tricky. You may notice how occasionally I'll like jump for no reason and that is because I am trying to avoid like blasts from the explosive boxes. That makes sense, right? Um, another thing is when I'm throwing boxes at people I need to keep in mind like if they're flashing. If you see them flashing that means they're in invincibility flame frames, meaning they just got hit. Sorry for the start of speech there. But anyway, and another thing about invincibility frames, this game kind of has a bug where there's like a fraction of a second in between getting hit and the invincibility frames where you could actually get hit again. Unfortunately, my run was not optimized to exploit this bug because it happened so infrequently and requires such precise timing that I could not pull it off myself. Anyway, um, that was actually one of my better runs of that level. I finished it in under two minutes. That was Jungle Bash, and now we're moving on to the second level, Space Bash, which is actually my favorite level of the four because of it has these cool mechanics of taking place in the future and having these power-ups, but more importantly, a destructible floor. TNT and Nitro Crates blow up and they make holes in the floor, and if you fall, it's instant death. That makes it really easy to speed run, and one strategy I saw among the top runners was to die in a hole as fast as possible and line it up so the other people like win in such a way that you can still come out of the top at the end of the tournament. But I found it easier to just blow them up in such a way that they fall down the hole so that I can win. Because... On easy, the AI is predictable. Like, you know what they're going for because you know what boxes are near them. And ideally, what you want to do is get the explosions to hit them in their walking path so they not only take damage but also fall in a hole that they can't avoid. 
And a speedy boot power up also helps if you're trying to get away from explosions. And not to mention the weights. Is like, in earlier attempts, that was my biggest time save. Just grabbing the weight, passing it on to someone else. Um, so yeah. That's why this is my favorite level. It's because, like, it really adds an element of strategy to the run. That, it, that would otherwise just be a mindless box throwing and randomness. It's like a casino, how there's always that one game that gives you the illusion of control because there's an element of skill, even though at its core it's still a game of chance. Like... It's like, I don't like when skill isn't 100% the factor, but like... A good game of chance can hide the fact that the skill doesn't 100% mean everything. Okay, now I've won four cups, which means I'm guaranteed to win the tournament, but I don't know if ties count for the board, so for the next level and the level after that, my strategy is either win one cup and secure the placement, or just make sure two different people win each of the levels. So in this one, I start to like, um, for this one I'm on the fence as to whether I want myself to die easily or to like, um, secure that fifth cup. See, I could have saved time if I had thought my run out ahead of time, but there it is. So yeah, apparently I decided to die quickly. That's good. Um... Other than the penguin, um, the only other unpredictable element is not only the ice, but where the power-ups are going to land up. Because this level actually has the same power-ups as Space Bash did. And one thing I'll never understand is that these guys like to make it a point to wake up the penguin as fast as possible and bring the pain. The strategy I was originally going for in this round was to let Dingo Dial win twice in a row so that we could move on. But I apparently won somehow, which even though that did cost me some time, it's actually a good move overall because now I have five cups. See, if I stuck with four cups, I'd have to make sure that whoever won twice here did not win twice in the final level. But now that I have five cups, it doesn't matter if Dingo Dao wins four times in a row because now I know he can't pass me. Um, but anyway, now we're about to head to the fourth level and the fourth level was a real pain in the ass because like, back when I was trying to win that thing, I noticed that the power-ups were unpredictable and um, it's actually what made me grateful to figure out that I wanted to die intentionally here because like it's easier to get yourself hit by the power-ups than it is to like guarantee you're going to get them and one thing I noticed about the easy AI with the power-ups here is that they are not very careful with them like they just spam the fire button with no regard to who they're hitting or when they're hitting them i'm approaching the seven minute mark now and this is what makes or breaks the run because like dingo dial just won so either dingo dial wins or i'm on the edge of hell Like, it's like, it's easy for me to die, but it's easier for me to make sure everyone that I don't want to win dies. Because then I feel like I'm doing something apart from just dropping a controller and letting the AI fumble all over themselves. But yeah, no, mem no memory manipulation was here, everything just happened to line up, and that's the end of my run and the end of my commentary. I'll leave it to the pre-recorded version of my voice for the outro now. And that's about all there is to say. 
If you're wondering why I didn't make this video sooner, it's because my run took three weeks to verify since I was a new member on the site. They also don't have a system in place to notify the runners via email, so I had no idea I got verified until the weekend of Pokemon Go Fest. Since that day, I've been knocked down to 10th place from my original 9th place due to a more recent run. But there's one thing this board can't take away from me. As you can see, every runner on the board, besides me, is marked as using an emulator. Yes, even the second place runner, because the PSP emulates the game. That's right, on this board, I am the first, and currently the only, runner to submit a run from an actual console. And if you think I'm done with this board, think again. One of these days, I'll be back, and I'll climb up the rankings. Let's go!